right, so we are training module number two, episode number two. We have a big audience in the background. Please make some noise. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. So today's training, we've got a bunch of bullet points. Um, most of it actually came at the end of the week when I was listening to a couple of podcasts of guys that actually had a lot of business. And they were talking about how they generate referrals while still going after new business. So one of the biggest things that they mentioned is that they have to create moments, moments, that's the way they, there's actually a book called Moment. And you create moments with leads, client interactions, and during the transaction. So a moment is they go into contract, send them a card, congratulations. They have, uh, the, they pass the board interview, send them a card, or thank the people that referred them. So the moments during the lead acquisition or during the client transaction is when you create them for life. Is They say, you know what, that was such a pleasant experience. I'll give you an example. As I'm going through a board package, it's very challenging. He's very frustrated because it's really tough. And I'm not creating moments that show, listen, when this is done, it's going to be a great home. You're right off the park. It's going to be amazing. So I was thinking last night, how am I going to create moments leading into the closing because we still have to submit it and we still have to have the board interview and everything else and it's not going to be easy from here out but it's one of those things that we have to we have to think strategically each area of listing it what's the moment we put it on all these websites then we have an accepted offer here's an email congratulations here are the next steps kind of thing we said it last week which is i'll now take responsibility for this in my life uh, this was from a podcast, and someone was saying, going into each year, people want to change. I want to lose weight. I want a better relationship. I want more money. I want to do something. And he says, enter the year and just say, I'm now going to take responsibility for this, and it's something particular. So I'll give you an example. For me, it would be being consistent, making dials every single day. That I'm going to take responsi responsibility for because if I do that, I know other things are going to fall in line appointments, listings, closed business, and then from there, you have more money, then you can put it into marketing, you can put it into mailers, all the other good things that we want. Third thing, most important thing is our word. Our word is everything. So it's your reputation. This is something that um, a guy was talking about. He said that he came from the old country, which I think was Ireland, maybe. And he said that it's all handshakes. There's no contrast. It's just all handshakes. And you essentially say, you're not going to do something unless you're actually going to do it when you say you're going to do it. So I've been guilty of this thousands of times. We probably all have been guilty of this where we say, yes, I'll attend that dinner. I'll attend that event. Or I uh, can't wait to go to brunch. Or we should grab lunch. Or we should do this. And it sounds great in the moment. But you actually, when the moment starts coming up, you actually have no intention of going to the event, going to the dinner, going to the brunch, going to the lunch, whatever the case is. So what he's saying is that if you know you're probably not going to do it, don't say you're going to do it. This could be for anything. It could be, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. If you know you're not going to go to the gym tomorrow, don't say you're going to go to the gym tomorrow because you're essentially losing confidence in your word. And your word is everything. Your word is your bond. It's all you have. It's your reputation. It's how people see you as a professional, as an individual, as a, a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, things like that. Said it on social last week is that we need to blast out our listings, we need to blast out our positives, we need to market better. This is on me. It's going to spread out. We have a lot of great things that are going on. We've seen a lot of great pro properties, but we need to long term think of consistency rather than perfection. And I need to make sure the video is perfectly edited or the thumbnail is great or the title is amazing or what do I look like or how's the audio. It's like, just put it out because right now people just want to see either authentic content or at least you documenting, this is obviously from Gary Vaynerchuk from many years ago, but documenting a beautiful home. It's New York City, it's real estate, people are actually interested. Uh, this was interesting, I actually heard this on a podcast yesterday. He said, there's no second place in real estate, only the winner is paid. <laughs> so if you lose a lead and you put, put up the listing, the second place person that didn't get the listing doesn't get paid. So essentially what he's saying is that you have to essentially get good enough where you're winning the listing because even if you're in front of clients or you're making phone calls or whatever 
is that second place doesn't get paid in real estate. And especially now, the divide is going to get even bigger. I think a lot of people, we've talked about it in person, a lot of people are either going to leave the business, uh, just go down the terrible market kind of funnel of negativity and then just kind of stop working or become part-time or start losing business. There's a lot of market share to be made in 2023. I posted on social media. I'm very bullish about New York City. Uh, there's not enough inventory. There's definitely a lot of people that have been sitting on the sideline and they're, they're ready to make a move. They're adjusted to the new rates. Moving over here, this is something that is very prevalent. It's called task switching. I didn't think of it. Obviously, nothing is original that I've thought of. But task switching is essentially is like, if I'm doing something, that's what I'm doing right now. Like a lot of us will be, you know, for us, we'll be making dials and then I'll check email. No, that's task switching. And essentially, they, there's a lag when it comes back to making calls. So there's a lag time to go over to emails and there's a lag time to go back. So you're essentially losing all that time. The focus and the boundaries are essentially saying that when I'm making dials, I'm making dials. When I'm putting it together, this was me yesterday. I have two board packages that I need to complete and submit by Thursday. I, I, I literally put on blinders, I turned off my phone, I turned off my computer, and I just said, this is all I'm doing. And for two hours, I had to compile a very complicated board package on one, and the other one was ensuring that all the correlated numbers match to the bank statements. It's very time consuming, it's very mentally draining, but I couldn't switch tasks. And that is essentially called, as Tom Ferry talks about, the highest and best use of my time. What is the highest, best use of my time right now? 9 to 10 a.m., it's making dials. It's making calls. It's getting appointments for the day. That's the high, he calls it the habu, highest and best use of your time. Celebrate actions and not outcomes. Um, perfect example is today, I'm on the treadmill. I'm nowhere near my 2019 numbers of pace and running and nowhere near it. You know, and it's like, well, the only reason 2019 was so good is because I focused on the actions and not the outcomes. And the outcome is that I didn't run as fast as I can, but I focused on the action, which is just keep on doing it consistency, consistently, and you'll essentially get the outcome. Okay, we're, we're all so focused on getting the closing, getting the listing and things like that. It's making the actions most important, which is the dials. And the last thing is... Um, we've talked about it. We meet every Friday. We have accountability on Friday and we talk about what are the actions I needed to take to get to our goals. So we have something called the yearly goals, which is coming up on the screen and it essentially is just three goals. That's it. Max. Mine is uh, run a triathlon again, pay down the debt and have enough business that uh, something happens. So each next to each thing. So run a triathlon, three specific measurable actions. That's it. You just have three areas to write measurable actions. Number one for me would be focus on sleep. Number two is be consistent in training. And number three is ensure that you are uh, eating correctly during the day because all of that affects my training. Um, paying down the debt. One is consistent dials. Number two would be Focus on, say, closing or getting better, which is the ratios, how many dials to appointments, to appointments, to listings, listings to sold. Those are all ratios. And we're in the midst of recording all that. We have to actually record yesterday's. I forgot. Uh, we didn't record yesterday's. And then each one of these has a specific action. And then the specific action is tied to the app that we use called Streaks. And then we can actually track how many times we do it. And then we meet on Friday. So this is kind of the visual representation and this isn't going to go anywhere. This is essentially going to be brought every Friday and it says like, okay, is this the best action for this goal right now? It could change. It could be different. You know what? I focus on sleep. Now I got to focus on putting my phone away an hour before bed. So that's the training for today. Nice and easy, under 10 minutes. Uh, happy Tuesday. We come live every single Tuesday. We're doing a training. Uh, maybe not real estate related. A lot of it is not real estate related, but everything in personal life goes to the business life and everything in the business life goes to the personal life. It's all inclusive. Uh, it's like a flywheel and then each area of the pie just completes the pie. So if one area is out of whack, like your health, your energy, your sleep, uh, your relationships, your money, whatever, it's going to affect the rest of the pie. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Have a great day and we will talk to you later.